It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. You'll hear about the hot topics in Yavapai County that affect all our lives. And now here's today's Countywide. Well, good day, everybody. Brad Miller, and uh, happy to be back doing Countywide and uh, a guest uh, that we've had a number of times on the show uh, over the years, although I think it's been a tiny uh, little bit of a while. Today, representing the League of Women Voters, uh, Robin Perdome Bauer. Robin is a past state president of the League, uh, is uh, currently involved with Northern Arizona chapter, and you've been involved with the League of Women Voters for decades. I won't say how many. I'll <laughs> Thank let, you, Brad. I'll let, uh, <laughs> I'll let you do that. And today is Election Day. And is the League, I want to just kind of start with um, what the League of Women Voters is about. Well, the League of Women Voters is a over a hundred year or year old organization that came about with the women's right to vote. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what we get involved with is our issues uh, that are important to our communities, issues such as elections and right. voting rights, and getting people registered to vote, and presenting information to the public about ballot measures. Right opportunities for people to hear candidates who are running for election. All in a nonpartisan uh, presentation. Abs- absolutely, in a non-pri- yeah. nonpartisan presentation. But we do take stands on issues. Okay. And we have over the years. We've supported things like clean elections in Arizona, um, the Independent Redistricting Commission, sure. and uh, big issues like that. Um, and locally, we've supported things like school override elections okay. and and stuff. So those are those are based on member discussion and agreement. Quite a quite a few things over over many many decades more Absolutely. more than a hundred years as a national uh, organization, okay. League of Women Voters. Well, let me ask you this: there is so much uh, uh, happening, uh, certainly nationally, but even in Yavapai County. And that's where I want to kind of focus our conversation today with the issues of election integrity, Mm -hmm. um, concerns by a good number of people about the 2020 election being either unfair, fraudulent, or any number of those, uh, those kinds of things. There's a lot of people on the national stage that still are claiming that that was uh, what happened in Yavapai County. Uh, two of our top elections officials recently resigned. Yep. Both of them suggesting that while criticism, questioning, even complaining are parts of the job of any public servant, uh, perhaps some of those questions and complaints turn cross the line into threats and intimidation. Yes, they My do. My words, not theirs. Yes. Uh, um, you're all very well aware of this. Yes, um, I am. You know both of the, the folks I'm talking about, Ms. Yes. Hoffman, Ms. Constable. Um, in your from your chair and the league's chair, uh, was the 2020 election in Yavapai County fair and accurate? Yes, it was. Okay. Absolutely. We'll- it was fair and accurate. Um, because Yavapai County has had a history of having very solid, fair, and good elections here. Uh-huh. Um, they have um, strong procedures in place and processes for running fair and accurate elections in Yavapai County. We always have been. Both Leslie and Lynn have been professional in their job and have ensured um, that that has happened here. They have also been very open about the kind of election equipment that is being used, about uh, the kind of processes for handling mail-in ballots, because that's a predominant way people vote in in Yavapai County is by mail-in. But both of them are very secure, very professionally run, with people who care very much about accurate and fair elections in Yavapai County. Can you determine from any direction, or, or what is your take, if you have one, a position of any kind, on some of the concerns about the prior election in Yavapai County being unfair or inaccurate. Some have even said um, uh, uh, that there was cheating or fraud going on, not just inaccurate, as in mistakes were made, but as in there were nefarious situations. I know you're not an insider. I know you're not with the county. (laughs) um, But have you seen anything that would cause the league 
to have that kind of concern or even a Ab- citizen? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Um, it was a, a unique election. We can all say that because we were in the middle of a pandemic and it was strongly encouraged for our public safety, our public health safety to vote by mail. Right. So, which was already a very big uh, deal in, in Yavapai County. Are, we, pe- are people, do you think, more mistrustful of mail-in balloting than in-person balloting? Is that part of the division? That could be, but that is kind of, um, that's kind of, doesn't make sense here in Yavapai County because Yavapai County has always had a strong percentage of people who vote, vote by mail. Somewhere is in the range of 70 70 plus percent. Very high, even in a national ranking. You have a, a- like Absolutely, County absolutely. Turnout. And this has been going on for many years. So right. this is was not unique to 2020 at all. Okay. Um, it just asked people to do, more people to do it instead of going in person to the polls because of uh, the pandemic. So I would say no, There, I saw nothing that would indicate that there was any fraud of any kind going on in Yavapai County. Okay. Things happen, mistakes happen, but nothing... Of course. Just the scale that that kind of thing would have to happen, um, to, to the point that it could change the outcome of a, a national election particularly, is, is, is pretty daunting. I think I can kind of understand some of it in that in Yavapai County, while well, former President Trump, I think it was 60 to 40 percent over current President Biden in, in Yavapai County. Yes. Uh, in Maricopa County, it was much closer. And, of course, statewide, uh, President Biden defeated former President Trump by a, the narrowest of margins. Correct. And anybody in that situation, if you're on the losing side of that particular vote, you're going to say, oh, my gosh. I think that's a natural human reaction, to, uh, regardless of your political disposition. A- absolutely. Nobody likes to lose a, 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 an extra inning no, game. No, <laughs> and, in fact, the election process allows for – uh, ways to do recounts when they are that close. Okay, let's go to that. There was an audit done yes. of Maricopa County, uh, and there was a several, lot of, it was okay. more than one audit. There okay. were several audits, and done. those the outcomes there were what in Maricopa. Well, they found it was basically the same, and right. even they found more votes for Biden versus Trump. It was the, and they were different processes, right? So uh, done. Whether it was the one that was done by the Senate, sponsored by the Senate uh, Arizona Senate, right. or it was done by the Maricopa County Elections Department through their election procedures for doing recounts. So they found there was no fraud. They recommended possible changes, right? I think that happens with any time you do some kind of evaluation of a an election. You always come up with what are things we could do better. Sure. Um, does that indicate fraud? No. It means that there are ways we can do things better. So none of those audits showed any major problems. Okay. And an independent audit. And an independent audit. Uh, criticized by a, by a lot of different folks, and mm-hmm. when that did finally kind of wrap up, here again, there was just no finding of major fraud or things that would have, again, out, uh, affected the outcome of the election. Uh, th- that is correct. There were some questions that it raised. Um, I'm not real familiar with all of those questions, yeah. but again, it, al- it allows the professionals in the elections department to step back and take a look of how the- those processes can be done better and even um, done better. They're already secure, but how do we make them even better so that people f- uh, understand the level of integrity, if you want to say, for elections and the vote, the right to vote. And that's where I want to go when we come back. We'll take a short break. We're talking with Robin Perdom bauer longtime uh, a member, active member, and a past state president of the League of Women Voters. Election integrity is on everybody's minds, and uh, today is primary election day. We talked just now about 2020. Robin, I want to ask you a little bit about today's election yes. in Yavapai County. We'll be back to Countywide right after this.
Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Call our office to schedule a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. Verde Solar, your hometown heating, air conditioning, and plumbing company in the Verde Valley for 38 years, and your trusted North Central Arizona Goodman dealer. Goodman is a name you can trust, designed, engineered, and built in the USA. Verde Solaire offers free in-home estimates on systems that are quiet and affordable. Verde Solaire is locally owned since 1983 and available for all your heating, air conditioning, and plumbing needs. Call 928-567-5315. Visit them online at verdesolaire.com. Better, cleaner, faster. Taxes, taxes, taxes. It's that time again. This is Lewis with Rice Accounting Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. We don't sell cars. We don't do hair or wait tables. We do taxes. At Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, we talk taxes and we prepare taxes. Open year-round for tax filings. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, located throughout northern Arizona. For over 20 years, our local preparers have helped neighbors pay their fair share and no more. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service in the Tri-Cities at 772-7872. That's 772-7872. Welcome back to the program. It is countywide. I'm Brad Miller. And again, uh, with the League of Women Voters, Northern Arizona, Robin Perdome bauer um, A lot of, uh, if you listen to any of the election ads that are running on our stations, the candidates, many of them have voter integrity. Uh, mm-hmm. at, at the forefront of, of the reasons that they're looking for these, uh, uh, the, the, these various jobs. Uh, you talked about 2020 in our first segment, the election there, and some of the controversies uh, there and how it worked out. Today's primary election day, again, in Yavapai County. We have had a change since 2020 at the top leadership in the county elections uh, department. Do you feel today's election will again be what you described the other one as fair and accurate? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because... Um, even with both of them leaving the elections uh, area, Leslie and Hoffman, Leslie Lynn, Hoffman, Lynn and Lynn, Lynn Castable, they have left the department in very good shape okay. with people there who know how to run elections. The new election manager, Michelle Birchall. Bertel uh, is taking over, and she has been there. Uh, she's a very good choice. Um, she will make ensure that the elections are run fair and accurate in Yavapai County because that is her job, and she's a professional. They have left it in very good shape with good people who know what they're doing. Okay. So I feel very confident that the 2020 primary election will be just fine. Let's, let me, if I can, shift a tiny bit about today's elections and some of the discussion might even affect people voting today. There's been an awful lot of talk nationally about some changes in voter laws, some enacted in other states, uh, some pending in other states, and and there's a lot going on. In Arizona, we have some of those coming up on the general election. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, The primary, not quite so much. But even given that, even given kind of the national um, uh, uh, reflection of of, of before, I'm I'm a little bit confused about different kinds of things. Example, I filled out my ballot. Yes. My mail, I'm on the early voting list, the mail-in list in Yavapai County. I filled out mine. My wife filled hers out, and then I took both of them to the drop box to, to get them in. Then I thought, can I do that? Yeah. Help me with some of these uh, Well, I think, yes, you can what, as family members okay. because you're just delivering it. it what – the law in Arizona basically says is that you not cannot gather from all of your neighbors and and you can't have an organized group that's collecting ballots. That's hey called, everybody up the street. I'll yeah, take your ballots. Yeah, you in. can't you can't do well, that. I understand that. Uh, um, you cannot do that. Right, and it's against the law to do that. Um, and they'll ask you about it. You couldn't take them to the county office and deliver them because that would okay. disqualify all those ballots, would be called into question. Okay. Let's go to something maybe a little more pertinent okay. to, to, to our audience. We have a lot of folks, uh, elderly folks, retire yes. or retirement age, um, who do need assistance uh, with mobility and physically getting their ballots delivered, mail-in or otherwise. Um what does that work? Is it still the same in terms of caregivers 
assist it. Talk to me about that. Yeah, caregivers can still assist them in getting the ballot back to the either a drop box or the election or to the mailbox or however they uh, want to have it delivered. That's absolutely permissible. Um, there's provisions on the ballot for somebody who's assisting them to sign that. Also, that they have assisted them in in doing that. Right, but it's it's absolutely that's um, nothing new. That's that's nothing new. The okay. basic changes that have happened in this for mail in ballot is that it's no longer a permanent um, election. Um, early voting ballot. It's called an active early voting ballot, which means you will you will continue if you are on the list for mail in ballots. You will get that on a regular basis. You will you will get your mail in ballot. If you do not return it or do that process for two elections in a in a row, you will be removed from the uh, early voting list. You will still be a registered voter, which means you can vote in person, but you will not get a mail-in ballot until you request it uh, again. So you'll have to go back and request being put back on the active early voting list. As you know, I'm slow on the uptake, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a piece of that. (laughs) It is a little confusing. and this is this is new. Yes, it okay, is in Arizona and Yavapai County. Okay, so if I chose not to vote in this primary today, I just didn't just ch- didn't, and I'm a mail in. I got it and I tore it up and threw it away. In November, I do the same. I don't. That's it. I will not automatically get another ballot in the mail as I have for years. After November, in after November, no, after November, after, yeah, that's correct. Because yeah. two elections. Okay. Yeah. Does this also uh, this accounts for any election at any level? If I if there's say just a one, I'm going to plead a little bit of uh, that. I am unsure about that. I would have to go back and read it. But my understanding is two statewide elections. Okay. I believe so. If there's like just a very local election, yeah, dog catcher in my hometown of Clarkdale, and I don't. Okay, so that one we we're a little bit uh, less clear about. Typically, though. You're going to have at least some county-wide issues mm-hmm. on on most of your, your your major ballots, as we do today, and as we will in November. That's correct. And then beyond statewide. Okay, uh, so that's kind of something to look for. Uh, look look out. Yeah, for. it's a big change in how mail-in balloting works because we've been used to being on a permanent list. Now they've changed the to an active list, which means you're an active mail-in. Um, ballot voter. Okay. Do you do you know why that was changed? Was it changed legislatively? Or it was changed it- legislatively. It was one of the issues that was brought up to ensure that we would have possible less fraud in the system. Not that I believe it occurred at all before. Um, it was a way just to tighten up that permanent early voting list and make it Active, which means you are an active voter rather than just being on the list and vote whenever you want to. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know. I guess I can understand that. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. I, 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 though I can see, say there's some sickness in the family or there's been, you know, and yes. you, you, you typically vote and then, you, you know, and all that kind of stuff. My worry is that people do miss two elections. Absolutely. For whatever reason. And then because they've been on the mail, they don't get it. They, they just don't do it. We know human nature. I'm lazy. Yeah. That could happen to me pretty, Absolutely. Uh, pretty easily. Yes, so. you have to be really on top of how you vote. Or, or the uh, the ways you vote. Where if you've been right. um, a mail in voter for many many years, you're going to have to watch how many elections you don't vote in. Yeah, by well, mail, by mail. Now this only deals with mail. Correct. Uh, you important. That's that's important Thank because you. there's yeah. a lot of people who vote by mail in Yavapai County. That does not remove you from the. Um, you're still registered. You're still registered. Right. Uh, it just means you won't get a mail-in ballot you're unless re- you request it. Once you register in Yavapai County, register to vote, mm-hmm. you are registered until you rescind it yourself. Can you get knocked off the registration rolls? Oh, you're registered to vote um, unless you uh, commit a crime, basically, or okay. move right, out right, of right. the county. Right, right, right. Um, 
if you change, uh, if you move within the county, you need to still change your registration to your new address. Um, And that's very easy to do in the state. We have uh, Service uh, Arizona, which is an online registration system that you can change your address. If you move out of the county, you have to re-register to vote in your new county. Um, The only way to be removed off of a voter list basically is if you become a convicted felon or you pass away. Okay, and these are not new. These are not new. This has been been standard procedure in in, in Arizona and Yavapai County, yes. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and take uh, our final break. And I think uh, before we get to the the, the November election, there's going to be a lot of ballot issues that do have uh, uh, pertain to uh, elections and uh, oh, and those yeah. kinds of things that'll be yes. so we'll we'll have you back at that time and talk. <laughs> uh, it's not really uh, in place for today's primary, but no. will be a big part of uh, Arizona and Yavapai County balloting uh, come November. So we'll we'll talk about that at that point. Again, we're with the uh, Robin Perdome Bauer, a uh, former state president of the League of Women Voters and an active member uh, for uh, for for many many years. We will return to Countywide right after this. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Service for over 25 years and continues to serve the communities in northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt is here to help you file your personal taxes. As laws and situations change, your local Jackson Hewitt Tax Service professional stays updated to serve you. Drop off or make an in-person appointment in Flagstaff. Call 213-8626. That's 213-8626. That's 213-8626. The award-winning experts at Verdi Solar Services offer the trusted carrier products that help you customize a solution to fit your budget. Verdi Solar is a family-owned business serving the Verde Valley for 38 years with the carrier products you can rely on. Carrier AC systems are trusted to bring energy-efficient, quiet, consistent comfort, Call 928-567-5315 for a free assessment of your AC and air quality needs. Verde Solaire Services, online at verdesolaire.com, a factory authorized carrier dealer. Don't let concerns about today's events derail your long-term financial strategy. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval, and I'm here to help. We can work together to understand the impact of these events and make sure your goals are top of mind. While you can't control the market volatility, We'll focus on what you can control. We can connect in several virtual ways. Start by giving me a call at 634-1044. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. Welcome back to the program. I'm Brad Miller, and our guest today, countywide, is Robin Perdome Bauer uh, with the uh, Arizona League, uh, Northern Arizona chapter of the League of Women Voters, a national uh, voting and election advocacy uh, organization for more than more than a hundred years. Um, uh, independent voters, we think about that in the, in the primary. I'm not. I don't know if you are, and if you're not an independent voter, you may not have much concern about that. What's how do, how does that work for today's primary if you are registered as an independent? Well, actually, I can speak to that very well because I am okay. an independent voter or a non-designated voter. That's what you um, technically are in Arizona. Gotcha. Um, today, on Election Day, if you're a non-designated, quote, independent voter, you can vote today. Okay. All you have to do is go to your polling place, wherever it is in Yavapai County, or any voting center in Yavapai County, and all you have to say to when you check in is, which uh, ballot do you want? Do you want the Republican ballot, or do you want the Democratic ballot? And you can vote. Right. Not in both, make, though. Not in both. Yeah. You have to choose, because this is a primary election, right. which really deals with the candidates who are running in each each of those parties. Right. Um, but you can vote, and it's important that you vote, because oftentimes the primary election is going to be the place where you're going to be choosing the people or a person who will uh, actually be winning, uh, running in that, uh, will have have, will have run that, won the race, right? because they might be the only candidate running. Sure. Okay. And that happens often, especially in Yavapai County. We have seen that over the years that um, you might only have one person running for that race. And so the election is basically 
completed right. at the primary level. Okay. And uh, folks, if you're listening today, you very uh, likely are going to be voting in person, uh, independent, Democrat, or, or Republican, or otherwise. Um, if you've got those ballots, don't put them in the mail. No. Mail ab- today. But we still have drop-in, uh, drop-off boxes. Yes. Um, what is What you can do today on Election Day, the best thing to do is to actually drop it off at a polling place. Okay. That's the best way today? That's the best way to ensure that your mail-in ballot, if you did not get it in the mail, is going to be counted, is to just deliver it at one of the many voting centers throughout Yavapai County, which you can do. And let's not forget, also, in Yavapai County, certainly, I think it's statewide, I can, if I live in Clarkdale, which I do, I don't have to drop my ballot off at the Clarkdale polling place if, say, I'm working today in Prescott. That's correct. I can drop it Actually, off there. Actually, it's, it's not statewide voting centers. Every right? county determines how they have their, uh, whether they have voting centers, polling places, okay. or a combination of vote, both. Yavapai County has had for many years voting centers. So, yes, you are correct. If you have your mail-in ballot and let's say you're, you live in Clarkdale but you work over in Prescott, Drop it off at one of the voting centers in Prescott is just fine. Okay, gotcha. And, of course, I can vote in person in the same way if I Absolutely, live. absolutely. Yeah. If you – same thing. If you're going to vote in person, you live in Clarkdale again and gotcha. you work in Prescott, you can drop by a voting center in Prescott and vote there. Okay. All aimed toward um, – I don't say if ease of election, but it, it just seems to me that the more people ease who of vote, ease, ease, ease of vote, the more people who vote in any given election is going to give us all the best representation of our community. Absolutely, absolutely. City, county, state, whatever. Abs- and, absolutely, and that's a good thing. I believe in voting. You know that I believe <laughs> in voting, and I believe everybody needs to have access to be able to vote who are eligible registered voters. Okay. Uh, Robin, I appreciate it so much, the work you do with the league and being an advocate there for uh, so long. We'll definitely have you back before November because there will be issues, as you, we mentioned earlier, yes, on the November will. general election ballot uh, uh, re- relating specifically to voting and uh, election matters in Yavapai County and, uh, and the state of Arizona. Robin Perdome bauer League of Women Voters. I'm Brad Miller. It's Countywide. We'll see you next time. This has been Countywide. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday as we tackle the hot topics and talk to the decision makers across Yavapai County. Each Tuesday and Thursday on this Yavapai Broadcasting Station.